Hi, and welcome back to The Vit Nerd. I'm Steve, and on this episode, I want to go ahead and update or replace the belts that are inside this Atari 410 data cassette recorder thingy drive storage device. Uh, I've got a replacement uh, set from Council 5. If you've never checked them out, it's uh, Council the number 5com They have a lot of replacement parts for the old computers. And I've got uh, the full set of four belts here for the Atari 410. And we're going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, I've never done this myself before. Uh, I've seen uh, some videos on it. And uh, it doesn't look too terribly difficult. Just a lot of parts. It's a mechanical device. It's like taking apart a, a clock, per se. A lot of mechanism in their mechanical uh, mechanisms. So I want to go ahead and replace these and uh, get this working again. I can hear the motor running. Uh, but nothing spins uh, for the cassette. So uh, hopefully I can replace these, uh, the motor's still good, and try loading up uh, some games on cassette and see how it works out. Well, okay, well, first things first, let's go ahead and start taking some screws out. I've mentioned this before. I like electric screwdrivers, but this old equipment doesn't like to be shocked with a very strong motor breaking plastic parts. Zip, 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 zip. There we go. Okay, those four are out. And I'm going to put these across the top here in order that they came out. So I know where everything goes back together. Ew. A little gross in there. <clears throat> okay. Probably undo this. Give it a little more space here. Wow, they didn't leave a lot there. Take that out there. Let's see if I can do this without taking the transformer out. I'll just wipe that case out a little bit later. So already we can see here this first belt that we can see it's all loose and uh, it's got kinks in it. Let me just take that right off. You can see it's not smooth and straight anymore. Uh, and any of these tape devices for any computer uh, the belts unless it's direct drive just get old dry up crack stretch kink and taking a look make sure these machine screws i'm taking out are all the same yep though this one has a little washer remember that goes over the traces here okay We can get to the first belt here. Oh, the second belt's over here. They didn't make this with any plugs that you could just take the wires off and clip them back on later. So let's just do a little dance here. That's not bad. Okay, so we got the first belt we saw. Oh, it's nice. It didn't dry up and uh, meld all over the metal. If you if you go to do this and any of the belt material is left on uh, the parts, uh, you got to clean it all off. Have a nice smooth, clean surface for the belts. So you got for first belt, second belt. There's a another belt down here. That one might might even be broken. And that's one thing, uh, no parts fell out for the belts. <clears throat> so you may open one of these and just have bits of black material rubber that falls out. Uh, I'm one for not just taking it all apart. I'd rather be selective, less to possibly break, less to remember where it goes. Could have been a lot dirtier in here. Thankfully not. Start taking this section here out. Oh, that wants to strip now. It's a sheet metal screw that is stuck in there. That one's not going to be good. Okay. 
So these two screws came from the front and they're not sheet metal screws. So we got to put them back in here where it goes into the plastic. Ooh, come on. I'm going to have to figure out how to get this one out here. It's a rounded head. So there's not much for this to catch on. That's not going to do anything. Oh, got it to turn a little bit. Yep. Okay. There we go. Put that with that. What do we got left here? Oh, again, I've never taken one of these apart myself. At least not that I remember. I could have did this 30 years ago. Not to replace the belts, though. There's another belt down here. Belt from here to here, and then underneath here to somewhere. So we're going to have to take that probably off. Okay. So I'm seeing all this goes back to here. When I'm taking something apart for the first time, I just kind of tug on it to find out what is probably holding things down. I think it's the door mechanism. Had to open the door. I'll show you here. This was latched into here. Go slowly so nothing falls out and then you can't tell where it goes back. Well, there we go. We got the third belt. So, and I'm not numbering these in any particular way, just as I first see them. So the first belt I saw, second belt I saw, underneath there is the third belt I saw, and I can practically replace all those right now. And then down in here is a fourth belt. I can already see the tension is lacking on that. Okay, so motor to the flywheel and then to this wheel. If this piece of plastic wanted to come out of the way, I believe this fourth belt can be replaced. So I'm seeing here, I saw this white uh, plastic piece with a screw, but I didn't recognize, I thought it was holding it down, but there's actually a bump right here that's, I think if I unscrew this, this will go forward more. Let's see if I can just loosen that enough for that to go over it without that falling out. I don't want to bend it and snap it. If I could just get it to go like another 16th or so of an inch. Just keep moving it to see where I could get a little more space. Something's keeping it from going back. I can expose the belt right there. So we got it out of this side, but this plastic piece, it looks like if I lift it up enough, I could get this belt out and then try to shove the new one in. So let's take a look at the kit here. Four belts of varying sizes. Thicknesses all are the same, it looks like. So I'm not sure which belt this is going to be. It's not going to be the biggest one. It's not going to be the smallest one. So the smallest one and the biggest one are on... Uh, this side, which would be the bottom side when you're using the unit. So the smallest and biggest are there. Then we got the two middle sizes here. One is here, which is really easy to replace. It looks like it's probably this one. You can see how this has stretched out over time. It's not going to be this belt, I don't believe. That's going to be going here. So the new ones, uh, as you're working this, the new ones are hopefully perfectly round, and the old ones are going to be uh, oval-shaped, or worse. Okay, so I'm going to make the executive decision here to jam a screwdriver in here to bend this black plastic piece up here to give enough room to get the old belt out and the new belt in. Now there's nothing under this plastic piece that I'm going to break, you know, no electronics or anything. I believe it's going to come out and then I'm going to fight to put it back in. That wheel, there's a little play to push down on it ever so slightly to help give more room for the belt to come up around it. I'm under the belief, because I don't see anything else in there, nothing else is going to hold this belt in the way once I get it over the wheel. On this side, we can pull on that wheel and get it closer to the opening. You can see it here, it's got, on my unit, it's got a red top to it. So I'm gonna pull that with my finger, hold it in place there, and then get this belt to flop out. Hopefully I'll get this down and then uh, whoever wants to try this themselves 
I'll save you all that time of figuring out how to get to this thing. I'm using a bigger flathead to help push to push the old belt back. Maybe. Okay. Let's try from this other side. I could probably take this out for now. I'm going to turn this over. So we're on the unit's backside again, and this is the belt area. So again, there's the wheel here. Down, down further is this belt is sticking inside the spindle area. I've got it, got it off its wheel there. And now I'm going to push it to go out the other side. And to my orientation underneath that wheel, all the other belts look like they're easy to replace. Remove some screws and all, but this one, well, I could just cut it out. Hey, look, that was easy. Voila. Okay, can't cut it back in though. So we've got these two belts, these two medium sized belts, and uh, it's kind of nice. This is the one I just cut out, and it looks smaller than the other medium belt. So I want to take this small medium. So going from size, we've got one, two, three, four in size. So this tough one appears to be the second to smallest. And now we need to tuck that back in. I'm going to place this back in here to lift up this plastic piece again. It should be easier to push the new belt in into place. Nice small screwdriver to kind of coax it over there. Again, from the other side, I can move it a little bit to get it closer to where I'm working. Like I'm threading. I guess very technically am. Okay, I've gotten it stuck under the plastic, this top black plastic piece. And you don't want to pull it out because you might stretch the belt. So it might be on. From this other side, I can see I've gotten it around. It's a little loose so far because the tension it hasn't been picked up yet. Let's get it down in there. And then like a bicycle chain, we'll just get this to go around here again. Kind of turn that to get on there. If you hold this black part here, you can turn that wheel and coax this belt to go on. At least that's my plan. Looks like I'm hanging up on this black plastic again. It's just only so much room right there. So I'm going to lift that up and I think the belt is on. Now I'm turning it because it did get a little uh, kinked. Well, oh, not kinked. It um, turned a little bit. But it looks like it's working now. So if I turn the flywheel here, which is touching the rubber uh, here, which is then going that way to the top of that where the belt is under here that we just replaced that goes around here. And as I turn the flywheel, you can see this turns nice now. Now, I think it did help to uh, loosen this, but let's get that back in place. Don't tighten too hard. It's just metal going into plastic and you'll just strip the plastic and and then as a as an old motorcycling group i've been involved with you'll be sad you'll be sad if you strip that okay that leaves uh that that was going to be the hardest i believed and uh i managed not to take everything apart which i uh, think really really helped to save some time on that so then that leaves us to the other middle belt. Right here on the top here to here. And that's turning the counter now. That actually goes down to the small one that is what's in the final drive there for the counter. So let's take off that small one. And let's spin that to see if that straightens out the belt for me. Yes, it did. Good. So we've replaced the smallest the second smallest, then the third one in size, and now we're left with the last large 
belt and we can see here it goes here and we just have to get off uh, one of these at least one of these screws here well looks like it's easiest to take both of these off so this goes in here like this here's the large belt okay I've got that twisted a little okay nice let's put that back on well I remember again metal screws into plastic so just lightly hand tighten and that replaces the four belts okay turn the motor turns the flywheel turns the rubber there which turns that hard belt that was hard to get the belt was hard to get out here which then transfers over to here and turns here which then goes over here to the counter mechanism let's go ahead and start putting parts together get these four old belts out of the way I've got these three parts I took out last and I did take out this small screw right here I don't think that had to come out at all I'm just gonna put that back in so everything's solid together here while I'm putting it back together so don't bother taking out this one here oh and I didn't have to take those out okay so when I was taking this apart I thought this plastic was all part of this frame here and it's not so that's gonna be these uh, two screws right here so these two through my trial and error do not take these out it didn't cause any trouble but don't bother okay now I'm gonna have the three metal standoffs here here and here and then that one screw I had trouble getting off and that leaves me with this one screw that goes back here okay so there's three standoffs and two screws one screw that go in the plastic this screw that goes into uh, the other metal standoff down here that we don't remove that metal standoff and just put them in almost all the way just leave it a little room to wiggle as you get these other parts in and these are all three the same size okay I'm just gonna see if the mechanism behaves So everything is working well okay so which way is this circus going here okay let's tighten up these screws these were done this okay tighten this one up tighten up the machine screw here and then these three standoffs that the circuit board rests on just lightly hand tighten which way am i going to flip this now oh let's look a, take a look at the capacitors here i don't see any leaking no damage on the circuit board this is old factory gunk on here i'm sure and i even see on this ic here there's a half a solder joint looks like it's good enough worked for somebody all these years okay so the board goes back here and these two switches just sit in front of the rewind and fast forward nothing that fit back in place specifically so this does not have to go in here it just goes in front of it so just line up the mounting screw holes and we should be all good just two regular machine screws and then the third machine screw that has the washer on it goes over here where there are some circuit traces that don't want to get shorted and put it on most of the way until you get these other two screws in okay put the SIO connector cable back in place it went behind the transformer here there's nothing that needs to line up other than the screw holes which is easy enough you can see all the stuff that fell out uh did have the wire tie let's see how important that is this was flopping over here so this is going to mess up with that large uh, belt so let's bend this back and put the wire tie back on 
I want it further down just so it doesn't short anything. Okay, don't break it off and have it short something. Okay, so we have to get the yellow blue bundle of wires out of the way uh, from uh, this belt here that comes off the motor. And that's why I put all the parts I take off in a row. And we'll put these screws back in and hopefully we're good. One nice thing uh, about this unit is uh, it has 120 volt on this uh, uh, North American unit uh, cable just right in there with the transformer so you don't need to get a power pack or anything. But then again, I guess if the transformer blows, you gotta open it up and replace that. Zip, 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 zip. And there we have it. Replaced the four belts and for me uh, in record time uh, because I've never done it before. So it's a record for me. Also, that was a fun project. I'm looking forward to finding some time to play some games off cassette and see if I can actually play them longer than it takes to actually load them off the cassette, uh, if you remember the old days. So uh, thanks for watching, and until next time.